Good evening, sports fans. McFarland Spartan football is on the air. Tonight's opponent will be the Whippets of Whitewater. Coached by Mr. Doug Parker, 3-2 and two overall, 2-2 two and two in the Rock Valley North Conference. Presently tied with our McFarland Spartans in fourth position. Big game tonight. Winner, definitely possibly headed to the playoffs. Loser needs to probably win out to get there. So big game tonight. Our McFarland Spartans, again, are coached by Mr. Paul Ackley, 3-2 overall and 2-2 also in the Rock Valley Conference. In last year's meeting, after falling behind 7-0, McFarland scored 31 unanswered points, including 17 in the third quarter, to cruise to a 31-7 win over Whitewater. David Arias, who you will see in tonight's ballgame again, had 189 yards and two touchdowns, as well as Antoine Washington had 88 receiving yards and also two touchdowns. Tonight, you'll see Whitewater. Keys to their game, ball control. They rush the ball a lot, 792 yards total. Very little passing, only 21 attempts so far this year. So ball control is important to them. They don't want to give up the big play, and obviously they want to avoid third and long situations since they rely so much on the rush. Your McFarland Spartans tonight, reduce penalties. McFarland's been very heavily penalized. Keep focused after last week's big, big homecoming upset victory over East Troy, as well as win the time of possession. So I'm Bill Cather. I'll be doing the stats and a little analysis of the game situation. Right now I'm going to turn it over to the golden voice of McFarland Athletics, Mr. John Wells. And thanks, Bill. I, tell, oh, I don't know if we can top last week's game as far as excitement <laughs> goes, but who knows? This is... It's going to be a really good football game tonight. Spartans come in, and they got to win two out of their last three, and uh, you want to get that one at home because the last two are on the road. Cooper to kick off for the Whippets. Looks like it's going to go to Arias in at about his 10, straight ahead, 15, 20, still Opening going, 25. Middle. Got an opening, got room, there he on. goes. 45, nice cut, midfield. It's going to run back the other way, and down he goes. He drops the ball, Whitewater gets the ball. Oh, sometimes that, oh, that's too bad. Arias getting off to a look what is going to be another great start, following, bumping up, as I said, with last year's game. But too bad. Sometimes that's what happened. You lose a little focus, probably got a little tired there at the end, and ball punched out. That's too bad. But time for the defense to step up now, John. Well, the turnover gives the ball to the Whippets at the Spartans' 48-yard line. Again, the way he was carrying the ball there, you, you knew something was going to happen. Punch just punched it right out. Yep. Boy, the old full house backfield here. Throwback uniforms for the Whippets. Yep. They're going to keep that ball on the ground a lot tonight. That was number one, Wendell Welter. Well, you got to love that name. Wendell Welter, Welter. 5'8", 165 pounds. He's a senior. He's number one. Jack Bullis, number three, is back there. Yep, we're going to see maybe uh, good, and looking at their year-long stats so far, maybe five, six, even seven different ball carriers they've used so far in their uh, previous five ball games, John. So we'll be calling out a lot of different names, but they keep it on the ground and just pound you. And as now they're going to go to the air, Bill. they got a receiver open. It's complete, and that's number 85, Anthony Johnny. Well... We watched a game here last week where East Troy came in off a big emotional win over Jefferson, and McFarland took it to him right from the start. Tonight, Spartans come in with a big emotional win over East Troy. Big crowd last week, not nearly the crowd tonight. Hopefully they're not staying home to watch us live because we aren't live yet. <laughs> First and 10 for the Whippets at the 29-yard line of the Spartans. Handoff again, that's Wendell Welter. Stopped by just about eight of the 11 defenders for the Spartans. Right. You know, doesn't that just figure, Jen, too, as soon as we just keep promoting that, yeah, they're just going to pound it on the ground, <laughs> pull it out, and, and throw it. But yeah. I think that's going to be more of just once in a very long while, I think they're going to probably throw the ball because they've only thrown it 21 times and completed 10 passes coming into tonight's game. So No gain on that, nope. Bill, so second down. Yep. Got to like the running backs when they take their position. They kind of put their arms straight out to the sides. Straight ahead. A lot of pursuit still, still going. going. No whistle yet. Second, third, There's fourth, the fifth effort there. Finally the whistle blows. And that's Miles. Yep. He'll Sorry, go forward. Miles. 
Going to pick up about eight yards to make it third down and two. That was Zach Miles. He's six foot, 180 pounds in his senior. Yep, Zach Miles so far this year, he's averaged about 71 yards a game, 41 carries, 285 yards, and Zach Miles has scored six touchdowns so far this year. So Third Keep down for the Whippets. Let's get a defensive stop here. That's Miles. Going to be very close to the first down. Got inside the 20. And going to be just short, so it's going to be fourth down. Certainly in four-down territory here, the Whippets. What is a Whippet, Bill? Is it a dog? I am unaware, John. <laughs> Don't want to offend anybody, but I think it's a dog. I am not sure. And the thing that's interesting... The Whitewater Whippets, so far, and looking at their season stats, have yet to attempt a field goal this year. So and I they're don't not here. they're not going to be doing it here. Hand off. Welter oh. got the room inside the 20, down near the 15-yard line, where he's pushed out of bounds there by Weedle and Keeley. Gets yep. the yardage for the first down, so the Whippets... Casey Got Angler. the Spartans on their heels, Bill, right away. Yep. Casey Angler had a chance to bring him down for about a two-yard loss there, but Walter just kept the legs driving and got around him and got the first down. So Farland needs to, again, I think, guard against uh, being real, coming off that real high from last week in that, John. Got to refocus here. Miles straight ahead. He'll get down near the 10-yard line. Again, you got to watch carefully in that backfield for the Whitewater Whippets. Again, a trio of backs behind quarterback Jack Bullis. Call that a gain of three, so it'll bring up second down and seven. Ball marked at the Spartan 13-yard line. Says the makings of a quick game tonight as Whitewater will keep the ball on the ground. Clock won't stop too often. Right. Miles again straight ahead. Going to get down... Inside the 10 at about the 9, that will bring up a third down. Call it third and third and 4. They need to get to just around the 6-yard line. Again, it's Friday night, September 28th. You're at Lloyd Schneider Stadium Point in John, McFarland okay. High School. Could you ask for a more beautiful night? Perfect day today. One of those right. perfect, yep. perfect fall yeah, days. Absolutely. Whatever you wanted to do as long as you were outside, I guess, right? That is correct. It was perfect for anything, and just cap it off tonight with a Spartan victory here would be that would be wonderful. Miles, plenty of room there down near the five should be close to the first down. They're going to mark it just short. Well, let's see. Yeah, we're going to go a fourth and one again, John. Might Looks be like a measurement. It is going to be a measurement, so that'll bring our trained. Chain gang out here to uh, do the measurement. Yeah, interesting situation at, at Whitewater. Doug Parker, the football coach, also the principal, a former head coach, stepping in. And these sports fans are the trivia and great little things why John Wells is a virtual dictionary. Probably not the only principal in the prep state sports. to be coaching high school football i don't know if we'd ever see jim hickey out there coaching no, but I, I, I don't want anybody to think it was a situation <laughs> where this, this guy's coached a, this guy's coached a lot of football so it's kind of a a, a big plus for whitewater <laughs> fourth down and short ball just outside the five yard line bullets the quarterback number three calling the signal somebody oh, jumps somebody jumped right for mcfarland the they're going to give him an easy one they'll Walk that off half the distance, and it's going to be first and goal for Whitewater. So, again, you worry about the Spartans coming out flat and avoiding mistakes early in the game, and they've made mistakes early in the game. So yep. they're going to have to uh, try to get a big stop here, maybe get that ball back, keep them out of the end zone. All right. I said one of my keys to the game was reduce penalties, and there we've got one already in the first four minutes of the game. So Bullis. Straight ahead handoff, touchdown. touchdown for Whitewater. And I believe that was number 42, Zach Miles. So Whitewater on the board first here with 7.03 to go in the first quarter. They go up 6-0. That'll bring in Andy Cooper to attempt the extra point. The holder will be Andy Taujas.
Good snap, ball placed, kick on the way, plenty of leg, and it is good. So 7.03 to go here in the first quarter. Whitewater, seven. McFarland, nothing. Again, Spartans with a great return. We get the ball over midfield, only to fumble it. Whitewater takes the ball right down the field against the Spartans, mainly on the run, one pass and one completion. But right now, the Spartans need to get themselves mentally back in this game or they're going to catch themselves behind here yep. and not be able to catch up. And, again, this is a must-win must game for us. Yep. For actually, for both teams here tonight, John, this is kind of a, this is kind of a tricky little game here. So let's Well, you know, there, there's absolutely, you know, and I hate to say this, but there's no atmosphere here at all. The crowd is, is not into it. And that made a big difference last week. Well, it definitely did with kind of the kickoff to McFarland's 50th anniversary in existence and uh, boy, a lot of alumni special tribute to uh, Bill Garvey 34 years the, the band director here and that and there were so many special events going on recognizing the 64 championship football team a little pooch kick here and field at the 30 I believe that's Redders still going down the sideline gets pushed out of bounds we'll see where they mark it Good field position here for the Spartans. 20 Austin Redders, 5'11", 155-pound sophomore. Well, we get it out to not quite where we had it, where we would have had it to start the game. So let's see if the Spartans can get something going offensively. Like I said, my keys to the game with Whitewater. They did first one ball control. They did that. Second, avoid third and long situations. They did that. And my third one was don't give up a big play. So let's see how they do with that on this. Well, big change here game. offensively. Colton Richter, the sophomore, is going to be under center here. Handoff. Oh, that's Perkles. Some Got some running room. There he goes. Down the sidelines. 40, 35. Cuts it back up. 30 and finally pushed down inside the 30-yard line at the 28 of Whitewater. So nice bit of running room there. A gain of 28 for Perkle. We've seen him make those big runs all year. Key for us tonight is keep a nick on the field when we have the ball. Yep, so again, a sophomore in a quarterback, Colton Richter. I'll have to check and see because played in the JV yep. game, I believe, the other night. So yeah, I wonder if Clayton Knights will something happen, or they just want to give a little change or a little work here to to somebody else. Englehart to the left, Weedle to the right, I formation behind Richter. And off Perkle, around the right side. Plenty of running room inside the 20. Tripped up there at about the 19. So a gain of eight. So Nick Perkle. A couple Perkle. of big runs here for the Spartans early on. And what the Spartans really need here, Bill, is to go down, punch that ball in the end zone. Absolutely, John. Nick Perkle so far this year averaging about 98 yards a game. Three touchdowns so far this year and about 7.1 yards. Uh, he's... Definitely above that right now. So Spartans just pound her in right here and get back to even. So second down and two. Here's Perkle. Look at that. Good running there. Looks like he was going to go down and then cuts it back to the left. Picks up some good yardage now near the 10. We'll see if they mark it inside the 10. Looks like it's going to be right just outside or... Boy, it's got to be real close to being right on that. Another eight-yard gain. And it will be first and ten, Bill. It's, we can get a first down inside the one-yard line here. But, again, yep. you know, we give the credit to the kid carrying the ball, oh, but you got to give line. the credit to the boys on the front Definitely, line. Definitely, John. I was, you read my mind on that. Offset eye this time behind Richter, first and ten for the Spartans. Hand off, Perk, a little bit of delay, straight ahead, gets inside the five and tripped up at the two. Boy, we're getting some big holes there. Again, credit that offensive line. Spartans taking the ball right down the field against the Whippets. Maybe we're going to have a high-scoring game here yeah, tonight, Bill. Be. A lot of offense here early on. It's exciting. And if both teams continue to just pound it on the ground... We could have a very quick game here tonight also, John, with the clock moving, moving, moving. Second down and two, ball on the three. Richter calls the signals. Perkle again, straight ahead near the goal line. Is he in? He's in for the touchdown. Nick Perkle, three yards. So, 4.43 to go here in the first quarter. Spartans are on the board. 
And Chris Weedle will be in to attempt the extra point to try to tie this game up. Well, talk about a confidence builder there for Colton Richter, the sophomore. Oh, did a great job of handing the ball off to Nick Perkle five times. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Hey, ball security, that's very important, as we saw on the opening play with a fumble. So new holder tonight, that's Engelhart. Ball down, kick is on the way. It is good, and we're tied. Good recovery right there by Casey Engelhart to uh, cover that kind of that little bad snap and that to get her on the tee. So. Well, interesting that's situation. Good. We had uh, Colton Richter in and Casey Engelhart, and I see Clayton Neitzel and Brandon Dow warming up over here, so maybe... Maybe they just took a little rest that first possession, Bill, and they'll be back in, but hey. Seven talk seven. about the kids that are out there, did a nice job, and the Spartans tie this game up. It's a must win. The band's playing, the palms are out on the track, and most of the crowd's just enjoying a relaxing night out in beautiful the, uh, night. In the uh, fall weather. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful night. You know, another thing that was kind of interesting we saw in last week's game, even besides Clayton Neitzel, we saw Chris Weedle taking some snaps at quarterback. He threw three passes, completed two of them, and uh, put together one real nice drive with uh, Chris Bag at quarterback. So it looks like Coach Ackley throwing a few different wrinkles oh, here. Yeah, and you know what? If, if anything, too, boy, talk about keeping practices more interesting and more fun, too, when kid comes out and you, you never quite know where you're going to be or what's going to be asked of you. So Weedle. Anything. Welter's going to get that at his 10. Straight ahead, 15. Ooh, almost a clip. Cuts it up over the 20, 25. Down he goes at about the 28-yard line. Almost a clip there. Back at about the 20-yard line, but no flag. And That's speedy Jake Wedvick out to get the tee. <laughs> Boy, Jake, he's been practicing that. You know, John, I just sense that we're going to have a smoother run game here tonight, too, since uh, obviously these are not replacement uh, officials that we have here tonight like they've been dealing with in the NFL. So we can see how smoothly the game can run if you just, you know, have regular officials here. First and ten, that's... Jay Percy's throwing again. Oh, oh, Welter wow. was wide open. Fooled even us up here in the box. He was 10 yards beyond oh, 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 everybody. Oh. Nice bit of fake there by Bullis, the quarterback. I guarantee you, Bill, maybe it'll be late in the game, but we'll see that play again. Wow. Again, when you when you show run so much, when you all of a sudden you go to that pass, you're going to catch somebody off surprise. And, Including yeah. the announcers, everybody. John. Everybody in the place. <laughs> Second down and 10. And a big gain. Welter going to be out near the first down marker. Boy, making Welter work. You just had him down the field 40 yards on that pass play, and now you come right back to him. Okay. He picks up 10 and a first down for Whitewater. And again, the Spartans yet to be able to show us that they can stop the whippets here when Whitewater has the ball. So first and 10 for Whitewater at the Whitewater 39-yard line. That is Miles. Miles will push it forward near the 45. He's dropped. It is a great night here for... High school football, absolutely a great night. I'll tell you this uh, powerhouse backfield that they have, again, it's it's kind of the trickeration. You don't know which of the three backs. Bill, looks the like ball some the of your basketball players are walking around in the crowd injured here, I see. Yeah, I don't, I don't like seeing that. I... Second down, just straight ahead again. That's Miles. Mm -hmm. He'll be the workhorse, but you'll see Welter with the ball, Taujus also. And again, Bullis, the quarterback, has shown us that he can throw the ball. So third down and two. See if the Spartans can dig in here and get a stop. 3.20 to go here in the first quarter. We are tied at seven. Yep, big play right here for the Spartans. Need to shut them down right here and see what Mr. Cooper can do punting the ball. Here's Welter. He will get into Spartan territory just yes. over the 50-yard line and pick up the first down. Correction, that was not Welter. That was number 20, John, John Saylor. John Saylor. I said we are going to see probably before the end of this game, we're going to be mentioning a 
maybe five or six names coming out of that backfield tonight, John. They Even like the manager to... might be out there. They're gonna, they're gonna have. <laughs> they just keep bringing them in. There's oh, Sailor again, play. and he won't make it back to the ship. He's gonna be stopped short of the line of scrimmage. He's gonna lose, gonna lose a yard. Push it ball back into. Just into Whitewater territory, Antoine Washington on the stop for the for the Spartans. Was his ship sunk, or did he abandon ship three yards back in the backfield, Mr. Sailor? Referee is signaling up here, Bill, to us about the clock. I think that they think we have the uh, control over the <laughs> clock. Andrew Day, he just waved back. Yep. Again, second down. Here's the oh, fake. Put her up again. Got a receiver open. In oh, and God. out of his hands. Boy, the most frustrated guy on the field right there. Number 42, Zach Miles. Had some running room. Probably wouldn't have got the first down on that because of the angle. But uh, incomplete. So third down, more than likely another passing situation for the Whippets. Hey, we haven't called them the Warhawks yet, so that's good. No. Nope. Question still remains. That big what game will a, be tomorrow. What is a whip it? That big game will be tomorrow. The Whitewater Warhawks against the Platteville Pioneers. Third down. Down in Platteville tomorrow. Bullis. Fake handoff. Got a receiver open on the back of the... Oh, sacked in the backfield. Big time play there by number 50. Mason Splinter. Wow, first time we've called Mason's name this year. That's wonderful. Yep. Mason Splinter, good approach. 6 2, 195, going to force the Whippets into punting. And that means back for the Spartans. Now, Chad Herps, number 31, and Chris Weedle, number 2. Yeah, that was very good pursuit by Splinter. High snap. Beautiful Ooh, kick. Booming punt. Going to go to Chad Herps at his 20, 25, and he'll go down there. About a six yard return. It's a nice kick by Whitewater, but hey, the Spartans, a good defensive stand. 2 one to go here in the first quarter. Game tied at 7. Spartans take over at their own 26-yard line. Yep, that was about a 40-yard punt by Mr. Cooper, Andy Cooper, and he's been averaging actually 43 yards a punt, so he's got a pretty good leg on him, John, and that came off a pretty bad snap too, so he had uh, And we do have a slight win from the north, but not much. No, that flag isn't exactly uh, moving the whole lot. Colton Richter, the quarterback for the Spartans. Handoff, Perkle, couple of missed tackles, got some room over the 30. Finally pushed out of bounds near the 35-yard line. Going to be just short of the first down by about a yard. That's his fifth carry for 61 yards, John. He's going at about 12 yards a clip. That's pretty nice when you got a back you can hand it off to <laughs> and you're banging a first down on almost every run every time he gets his hands on the ball. So good job. I think Spartans would like to do the same thing, just ball control and pound it right at Whitewater here. This time it's Arius. Maybe that was Arius who carried the ball last time. Arias thrown forward, going to be very close to the first down. Sailor on the tackle for Whitewater. Going to be close. We might have our second. Yes, we're going to have our second measurement. With 117 to go. What do you think, John? I'm saying first down McFarland. Uh, hard to tell. <laughs> Come I'm, on. I'm going Come to say, at I'm gonna say it's... It's short. Well, sure. We have to disagree, right? I'm going to say it's short. We have to have a winner and a loser. You are the winner. As are the Spartans. First down. Hey. I'm feeling pretty good. Even a blind man sitting way <laughs> up here can be. Can That'll move the sticks. So, again, I believe that might have been Arius that's carried the ball a couple of times. I do see Perkle here on the sideline, so I don't know if. Okay, They're and like I said, David had a huge game last year against Whitewater, 189 yards and two touchdowns against the Whippets in last year's game. First and 10. Arias drops the ball. Who's on it? Might have fallen on it, oh. and he does. Going to lose 
lose a good yard here, so it's gonna bring up second down 11, but David's gotta hang on to that ball, almost, almost a second fumble, second turnover, but he recovers it. And the worst out of it is just a loss of a yard. So again, down to 40 seconds to go here in a very, very quick first quarter from Lloyd Schneider Stadium. Um, must say. win for both teams. Again, when isn't a game a must win? I always, <laughs> I've coached <laughs> long point. enough. I can't imagine anything other than that. Ah, there's Perkle back in. Gets around the outside. Got some room. Oh, needed a block there. Still going. And very close to the marker. Needed a block that would have freed him up for a few more yeah. yards. Didn't get it. But there's laundry on the field here. Back in the middle of the field. And we have a hold. So this baby comes back. So great effort by Perkle. For not going to come back. The hold. Fireland's second penalty of the evening. And I said they have been averaging almost seven penalties a game, John. And that's something that, jeepers, you just hate to see it. Because there you pounded it out where you had about a third and one to go. And now you're looking at second and really long. And. Yeah, the ball's back at the 28-yard line. Spartans need to get to the 46, so yeah, it's second so down and 18. 18. And, again, Colton Richter is your quarterback. Looks like they're just going to let the clock run out here. And Kinda it looks will. Like it, so one quarter in the books here from McFarland High School on Friday night, September the 28th. Score your McFarland Spartans seven, the Whitewater Whippets seven. Yep, entertaining first quarter, Bill. Very entertaining. Uh, just looking back at the scoring, it's 7.03 of the first quarter. Zach Miles on a four yard run for Whitewater put them up seven to nothing. And then at 4.43, after kicking off, McFarland just answered, came right back down the field at 4.43 of the first quarter. Nick Perkle, a two yard run to, to knot it up at seven. So think again as long as both teams here uh, McFarland has yet to uh, put the ball in the air it's we got a new quarterback in there at night Colton Richter that seems to uh, we just seem to be interested in pounding the ball on the ground here with uh, most mostly with uh, Nick Perkle so far and this clock is going to just keep moving and moving and moving so senior we'll see. night tonight yep Bill, senior again. night maybe I mentioned some of those uh, a lot seniors of seniors there. and some some great ones Andrew Barr Andrew's uh, been out most of the season. He's on the sidelines, but not in uniform. David Arias, Brandon Dahl, Casey Engelhart, John Ennis, Ben Cragness, Colin Klein, Cliff Manileg, Egan Keeley, Max Jackson, Nick Copleen, Nick Perkle, Clayton Neitzel, Jacob Ciesenop, Logan Rasmussen, Adam Rowe Johnson, Justin Silvis, Marty Swadek, Jacob Sloan, Chris Weedle, and Antoine Washington, and our managers, Emma Dillon and Jordan Croneman. Again, a lot of valuable contributors here. Yep. And when you think that, of all uh, the hours that these seniors have put in, all the way from way back, I'll bet when they first started playing flag football here in McFarland, and now uh, they're starting to see this getting closer to the end. So big night here on senior night. They want to finish out their season with a home victory here. Well, second down and 18. Clayton Neitzel back in the game. Brandon Dahl back in the game now for the second quarter. And Neitzel... Right off the bench, goes out, attempts a pass, incomplete. So now it's third down and 18, and everybody in the place is guessing he's probably going to go to the air, including the, well, looks like maybe you got about 100 fans over there from Whitewater. I'd say so. How about a little screen pass here, John? Or maybe what worked so well last week two times was Antoine Washington just going straight up the gut and hitting him on a fly pattern. The official is coming over here saying that was an awful lot of time to run off the clock when there was an incomplete pass. In fact, 37 seconds ran off the clock. You can't yep. tell me the play took that long. So they're going to put some time back on the clock. Nobody notices it in football, Bill, unless it's at the end of a quarter. But by golly, you don't stop that clock in basketball. you got people coming out of the crowd oh, at you. Oh, yeah. Yep. So 11.50. Coaches, players, and fans. Third down. And long for the Spartans. Let's watch Washington. There he goes, right up the gut. Air it up to Weedle. He goes up. He's got it. Inside the 35, 30, 25, Turn it on. Turn 20, it on. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. 
touchdown. Holy cow, 72 yards. 72 yards. Clayton Eitzel to Chris Weedle, nicely thrown ball, but you got to credit Chris Weedle, who came back to get it, wins the jump ball, outruns the whippets to the end zone, 72 yards, and the Spartans go up 13-7. Wow. Yeah, that was a great catch. Almost took it off the defender's back. And the first and thing Bill was doing was looking for those penalty flags. And yep. There were none. So Brandon Dahl in the hold, Chris Weedle to kick. Boy, that's one for the highlight film right there. And on senior night, two seniors, Clayton Neitzel, Chris Weedle. Good snap ball, place kick on the way, hits oh. the crossbar and does not make it through. Bill, these extra points can be huge. 13 to seven, nevertheless, with 11.38 to go here in the first half. Spartans on top. Yeah, that was a great play. Yeah, it was, and again, John, but we still, you know, as we sit here and say, missed extra points. I mean, you know, in most sports, and that's something that a casual spectator in that, or, you know, will just say, oh, it's automatic. You know, you're just looking to say, we're up by seven now, but. Pay attention to detail. You have to have a good snap, a good placement, and the kicker has to have his footing. I mean, footing correctly uh, in order in that, and obviously if one of those strings doesn't work, those can be very big missed extra points, especially in a game like this that probably is going to be very closely contested all the way through here, John. So hopefully well, yeah, we'll that won't come happens. back to haunt them. Sailor and Gorsuch deep for Whitewater. They'll be back near there. Just inside their 10-yard line, Chris Weedle will tee it up. You never can tell, too. Chris might have been a little winded after uh, that catch, and he immediately made a nice run, a great run after uh, catching the ball, too, to get in the end zone. Goes to He drops the ball, goes back inside his 10. Let's not overrun the coverage. Cliff Manileg there. David Arias. Down he goes at about the 10-yard line. So great pursuit on the kick team. By the Spartans, Gorsuch. Can't be a worse feeling in the world than when you drop that ball and all of a sudden you got 11 guys coming at you. You got to find the ball first, right. which Gorsuch was able to do. So first and 10 for Whitewater now at their own 10 yard line, trailing 13 to seven with 11.31 to go here in the first half. From beautiful Lloyd Schneider Stadium, in McFarland, Wisconsin, for those of you watching in other states on tape delay here. September 28th, 2012. And ball carrier just straight ahead, drags three or four Spartans with him. And that is Miles. He's going to get out to about the 20-yard line. So he's going to pick up nine to make it second down and one. And again, Bill, we've seen several times this year kind of the you know, football's kind of, offenses in football kind of go in cycles. Now you're into that, you know, tight formations. Right. Yep. You know, Jefferson with the, the double wing, Parkview, and, and now this formation, it's, it is kind of a throwback to the old days. And Wigan Whitewater just pounding it up the middle. And this time that was Wendell Welter. Yep, for about eight yards, he's... And make a good racing name there, Wendell Welter <laughs> and Will Wyatt. I think I like Will Wyatt better. I knew he'd sneak a little car racing I in love here. Names. John, the voice of love MIS. Names. Love names, love names. <laughs> so first and ten for Whitewater. Again, run up the middle. Not going to get much this time. Maybe out to the 30-yard line. And that is Miles. Arias on the tackle for the Spartans. Call it a gain of three, second down and seven. Zach Miles' 10th carry for 36 yards. And Bullis has shown that he can throw the ball, and of course, they fooled everyone. A couple of feet overthrown, oh, but what? other than that, yeah. uh, Whitewater would have two scores on the board. So yes, second down and would. seven for the Whippets. Again, the full house backfield behind Bullis. And off. Good running room that time for, that's Miles again out over the 35. Going to be just shy of the first down. Well, going to be, going to say his knee was down. 
inside the 35, so that's going to make it, make it third down and three as we near the nine-and-a-half-minute mark here to go in the first half. Well, it's just interesting, too, John, when you think of Miles going both ways. He's already carried the ball 11 times, and then also you're asked to be out there on defense, too, going both ways. Got to be in great shape. Third down, again, ball carry just puts his head straight down. He's going to get it. Doesn't hurt having a couple of linemen behind you pushing you forward. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they got to say, again, that knee goes down just as he crossed the first down yep, marker. Behind. So first and 10 for Whitewater. Ball's going to be near the 39-yard line of Whitewater. Scoreboard says 38. That's what we'll go with. You know, they basically, they just form a wall and straight ahead they go. This is Taujus. He'll get over the 40. Still going. Spartans drive him back after a gain of three. Well, he said he dropped the ball. And the Spartans get it, and a player for Whitewater getting up very slowly. Wondered what was going on, Bill. We couldn't yeah. see it from here, but all Good. of a sudden the play took a big jump to the right. Right, and I saw that backfield judge throw his little marker in there, and I was going, what, what's he throwing that in there for? So we didn't see the ball come loose, but... Obviously, big turnover here, and this would be wonderful if the Spartans could cash in on this. And I think that's Andy Taujus. He might have been the ball carrier there who is shaken up. Jay Hansen right out on the field. Yes, our McFarland's own. most valuable yes, he is. player. And Taujus yep. is up. He's off on his own power. That's great. But even better news is the Spartans will take over first and 10 from the Whitewater 42-yard line. 8.59 to go here in the first half. Spartans on top, 13-7. Another score would be great. We've got Washington and Dow lining up wide to the right. Two to the right, two to the left this time. Out of the shotgun. That is Weedle looking to throw. He's going to throw the pass to Dow. He comes back, gets it. Wow, Chris Weedle. That was close to having, that was a 32-yard pass yeah. completion. Boy, we could have seen Chris Weedle catch a touchdown pass and throw one in the same quarter. That doesn't always happen. <laughs> in fact, I don't know if I've ever seen that happen. Nope. Chris Weedle now completing 75% of his passes, three for four on the year. But just a little different wrinkle now. This is the third different quarterback that Coach Ackley's thrown at Whitewater tonight. Here's Weedle, going to keep it. Tripped up, still going inside the five, into the end zone. Touchdown, nine-yard run for Chris Weedle. So at 840 now, the Spartans go up 19-7. They have used three different quarterbacks here in the first half. But again, like you said, Bill, you've got athletes. Get them out there where you can get them the ball or let them create some offense. And again, Chris Weedle, nice job doing that. Now the extra point. Spartans are up 19-7. Thought they might go for two. Well, let's see. Weedle will line up to kick Dow the holder. Maybe we'll see a fake here. Who knows? Seen everything so far. Good snap. Ball placed. Kick on the way. Plenty of leg over the middle school bleachers. And good. <laughs> so 8.40 to go here in the first half. Spartans now on top. 20 to 7. Bill, I guess the fumble on the opening kick and Whitewater taking it down the field and scoring was a wake up call for the Spartans. As they, as they have now scored 20 unanswered points. 20 unanswered, and last year they scored 31 unanswered after falling behind 7 0. So maybe history is going to repeat itself here, John. Let's hope so. Yes, that would be, that'd be very nice. Because the Spartans now again got to win two of their last three. They certainly are able to win all three of them. Next week, they head to the, the Great Wilderness over at Palmyra. If you haven't been to a game at Palmyra, I encourage you to do so as you look Close from. to my heart, John. If you'll remember, that's where I started my teaching and coaching career. And if you sit in the in bleachers Palmyra. and look to the other side of the field, you see nothing, not a nightlight, <laughs> right. nothing. I mean, it looks like the world just Oh, John, to you can kind of see downtown Palmyra. From oh, the the other, you're looking the other way. <laughs> Weedle's kick. 
Going to be fielded at the 15-yard line. Cuts up over the 20, near the 25, and down he goes there. Was that Saylor? It was. So Saylor brings it out to the 25. Good coverage by the Spartans, and Whitewater will take it over first and 10. Again, 8.33 to go here in the first half. Yeah, Palmyra, if I remember right, I think all the fans sit on one side of the field. On the other side, it's the visiting team and, and absolutely nothing right. behind you other than wetlands and prairies and forests and everything else. You see there in the lower Kettle Moraine. Yep. Whitewater comes up. You'll see those backs put their arms out so they have the proper spacing. That is Miles. He's got some running room. 35-40. Cuts it back upfield. Nice cut into Spartan territory. Finally down at the 45-yard line. That's going to be a gain of 29 yards for Zach Miles. Good bit of running there. Had some room. Cuts it upfield nicely. Finally down at the 45. Whitewater moves the sticks. Yep, don't get too complacent here now, McFarland. Say, hey, we're up by two and just kind of lax here. This is where you kind of want to be a big stop. Maybe bang one more score on here before halftime and get up three scores. First and ten, that's Welter. He will not make it back to the line of scrimmage. He is stopped there by a host of players, Craigness. You know, Paul's a quarterback. Keely. Yep, does such a good job here. I mean, even myself, I was thinking he was coming around the outside and just wondering, is he going to pitch the ball? And actually, he'd already handed the ball off to Welter heading up the middle. So he does a real good job of uh, continuing to play out the, I guess, follow out the play, even after he's handed the ball off. I mean, so he, he's keeping the McFarland defenders on alert here because they, they never quite know where who's got the ball there. So second down and 10 for the Whippets at the Spartan 45-yard line. That's Miles again. Good right running room. Good. Inside the 40, still moving. Inside the 35, that'll move the sticks for a first down. Miles, just a strong kid, just never gives up. Keeps those legs moving. 14th carry for 84 yards. That's well, all. Bill, I said first down. It's going to be close. John, that's a first down. I'm going to call it again. Eric says it's a first down. Andrew, Andrew Day, Day says, says a first. I can't even see it. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, no, he's got it on he's the He's got a close-up. He's zoomed in on it. He was signaling first down. And it is. So first and 10 for Whitewater. Ball just inside the Spartan 35-yard line. 7-10. Time to go. 20-7. to seven. Spartans on top here. It's kind of giving us the Atlanta Braves, Florida State Tomahawk Chop, meaning first down. So first and 10 for Whitewater. Bullis the quarterback. Welker. Gets pushed out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Again, Wendell Welter, 5'8", 165-pound senior. Might make my list of favorite names. I always like those names or the first first name and the last name are with the same initial. <laughs> Wendell Welter and Will Wyatt. I don't see Will Wyatt over there. Maybe he's number seven. Again, Whitewater does not line up anybody outside nope. the box here. Nope, there are no split ends at all. Straight ahead, Miles down near the 25, very close to the first down. Keely on the stop, going to be just short. Gee, John, do you think somebody like Woody Hayes would like a game like this, huh? Well, Spartans are going to take a timeout, need to make maybe a little adjustment defensively. Yep. Three, four, five yards and a cloud of dust. Uh, this is not your wide open football, like you said. A lot of teams, like you said, your, your Jeffersons, your Orfordville Park Views. Now tonight, your Whitewaters and that are really packing it in on offense and really uh, just possessing the ball more rather than putting it up in the air and sp uh, these spread offenses now that are kind of dominating the NFL in that. You're seeing high school ball going almost the opposite direction and really uh, Everything goes in cycles. Yeah, you, know, it you, does. you live long yep. enough, you see things come back. You never thought the, the old single wing that my dad used in the 1940s and you've got... You know, teams 
using that again, and it just there's some creativity I think in in oh. offensive play calling, but you know you go with what works, and bottom line is if the other team can't stop you, it works. So third down and very very short. Bullis up to the line of scrimmage. And that is Welter. And well, ball was fumbled, but well after the whistle no. blew and he was down. It's going to be down near the 20-yard line, and that will be a Whitewater first down. Boy, John, you know, so far this year, Whitewater has averaged 159 yards a game rushing. Already in the first half right now, they are at about 138 yards, so they are almost at their per total game average already in this first half alone on oh, nice penetration. So again, Welter didn't fool anybody, stopped in the backfield for a couple of yard loss. I'll call that Miles. Even fooled me, I had the wrong ball carrier. No, that was, I thought I Bullis think... kept it first, then I thought he gave it to Welter, but actually it was Miles, the man. I think that was Mason Splinter again that was in the backfield dropping him for a yard loss. So second down and 11 for Whitewater. Ball just outside the McFarland 20 yard line. 5.20 to go in the first half. Jack Bullis, the quarterback. Hand off straight ahead. That's Welter. Gonna be down near the 12 yard line where he is pushed back. Austin Redders from his defensive backfield position up to make the stop. Again, and senior night here tonight. You know, it's Wild hard to tell, school. Bill, where they mark the ball on that stop. Looks like Jerry Herbst over there holding the down marker now. Says third, but that's about third and three from the 13. Need to get nope, just inside the 10-yard line. Four down territory, certainly <laughs> for the Whippets here. Barks the signals. Oh, movement, and I believe movement the right on both guard sides of, of Whitewater. McFarland kind of jumped a little bit, but didn't go across the line of scrimmage and caused the right guard of Whitewater to get a little antsy and come across. First penalty of the game on Whitewater. And a costly one because now it's third down and eight. Yep. Almost a penalty-free game here. One on Whitewater and two on uh, McFarland so far. They're running night. the same play they were going to run before the penalty here, so oh, no sure. doubt a run. Yep. Welter doesn't fool anybody again. That was Splinter on the stop, and Washington finishes the job. All so right, nice defensive think? play, pushes the ball outside the 20. It's fourth down and 11. Bill, here it is. This is the play. Whitewater <laughs> ran and had Welter wide open, and Bullis overthrew him earlier. I can see it coming here right now. I think they're going to wind up taking a timeout here. Bullis still over at the sideline. We're yeah. down to three and a half here. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Which, again, I you let the time run off the clock and you call your time out. You're going to give the ball back to the Spartans either way, whether you score or you get stopped here. But again, Bill, I think we're going to see that play. Well, they that would have been definitely. six for Whitewater yep. earlier, but I'm not calling the plays. There are a couple of doors down from us. and The only thing that I think that you might not see it here, John, is because it was... Kind of a little trickeration play, and here it's a pretty obvious maybe passing down. And I think you might see them set it up in the second half where maybe you So you're saying a, they're uh, going to run? It's an obvious passing down. I don't know. I think Bullis has shown he can, he can, he can throw the ball. Does he have one completion so far? Okay. I'm going to take a long shot here. Field goal? <laughs> no. They, they haven't attempted You know this... Gorsuch has also thrown eight passes, one for a touchdown this year. Bill, field oh, goal. Oh, they are. Cooper. It's going to be a fake. Andy Cooper. I don't know. Andy Cooper's got this. will be their first attempted field it's goal this fake. year. 
tell you what, he's kicked, his kickoffs have gone pretty deep. 38 yards. Ball down, place. It's going to be good. No. Oh, wide right. Wow. Had the had distance, distance. But wide to the right, they fooled all of us, Bill. Well, that's not hard to do at times, Chad. Well, the only thing we didn't guess was punt. <laughs> Quick kick. Oh, Andrew Day, you said punt back there. So he's... I told Andrew we'd work his name in here five yeah, or six times good. tonight. Oh, so. we should work Eric Redding's name in here too tonight. Huh? Certainly will. Yeah. Got a four-man crew up here yep. tonight. And again, we, we can't really do it without them. We really appreciate having the yep. opportunity to do this. This is great, and we're going to be uh, we'll be doing some basketball games during the winter season when we're not coaching. And yep. Well, Spartans now with three seventeen to go. They're going to look to push the ball down the field and get another score. They will kick off to start the second half. And off, that is Perkle, straight ahead. Gets out just shy of the 30-yard line. I like the way Nick carries that ball. He's got that hand, you know, straight up vertically yep. over that ball right near his, Tuck, his shoulder. Tucked in tight. Give it nine. Spartans with two timeouts. Very distinct running style. You, you can pick him out even without a number. We're going to throw to Weedle this time on a second and short. Let's see what I know. Nothing. Nothing. Straight ahead. Nice run by Keeley. Picks up the first down. Stopped out near the 39-yard line. First and 10 for the Spartans. 2.40 time on the clock here. Maybe this is the one they come out and throw to Weedle. Well, John, if you keep saying they're going to pass long enough, obviously you're going to be right one of these times. I, well, they're I'm just throwing out a wild guess, but I think that maybe at some point in time tonight you're going to be right with calling a pass. Well, not this time either. <laughs> Perkle, big run, all the way down inside Whitewater territory to the 41-yard line. That'll be a 20-yard gain for Nick Perkle. Now you've got Whitewater guessing run, run, run. Now do you mix it up? Again, the play calling for the Spartans has been terrific here this last couple of games. What do you think, John? Very entertaining. Y you think they'll, they'll pass well, it gonna, here? They're either going to huh? pass or run. <laughs> Might as well guess one of those two. I'm going to be right sometime. Perkle, left side, inside the 40, down near the 36-yard line. Hey, and you were right, John, in that... They ran the ball. Clock still moving. We're under two minutes to go. Spartans in good shape. Ball's at the 37-yard line. Second down and six. This will be a throw. Two to the right here. Perkle gets away from one. All right, just want to make you feel good and guess wrong myself. Going to get near the 30. I believe that's going to be good yardage for the first down. Huge if we yep. can get a score here. Nick Perkle just reached the 100-yard rushing mark for tonight. Nine carries, 100 yards. Ball is at just outside the 30-yard line. First and 10. Clock on the move, and the officials are going to say timeout was gonna, Whitewater. Yep, they were going to have too many men on the field trying to get a guy off the field, and they could see... Well, the Whippets know they, they cannot the afford to give up a score here and go down three scores. Right. Letting McFarland take all the momentum into the locker room. Again, Whitewater will get the ball to start the second half. But you just want to make sure that you're set defensively. And it looked like there was a little confusion on the for the white and red whippets, the throwbacks. You just don't see many solid colored uniforms anymore. No, you don't. Because, you know, I think... All these companies know that kids, especially at this age and that, kind of like a little more of the, the coloration and stuff like that. And I was joking with you saying they're kind of a red Penn State, most with the block letters, but block numbers, I'm sorry. So first and 10, ball at the 30. We're just outside a field goal range at this point. Yep. Neitzel rolls to his right. We're going to get looks, our pass, looks, John. Looks, Going to tuck it up and goes out, out of bounds. bounds. Stops the clock. Yep. Looks like maybe at about the 20, 29-yard line. I don't know if that was a home team mark or not. It certainly didn't appear to be. But, again, we're 
A little blocked out by Mike Friedel there on the sidelines. 127, so not much time went off the clock on that play, about six seconds. 20 to seven, our score, Spartans on the move. Ball at the Whitewater 29 yard line, second down and nine. Two to the right, one to the left, handoff, Perkle, left side, inside the 25, inside the 20, inside the 15, 10, down near the five yard line. Nick Perkle appeared to be stopped after just a short gain. Keeps going, never gives up. Down to the five yard line. First down and goal for the Spartans. With a minute 20 on the clock. Now they can take their time here. Now just to fool us, will they pass for the touchdown now after running it all the way down the field, John? Yeah, I got to uh, I don't think they're so. Gonna just they're just going the to pound this thing in. Yep. Perkle straight ahead, straight in the end Almost zone. You could have driven untouched. the truck through that. Into the end zone for the touchdown. 1.11 to go here in the first half. It is now McFarland 26. Whitewater 7. And again, the wake-up call to start the game was all the Spartans needed as they have now scored 26 straight points. Chris Weedle will look to make that 27. Boy, that was a solid running drive. And again, kudos to the line, John. The line that just kept opening those holes. And I think Whitewater... Just kind of back on their heels, waiting for the pass, waiting for the pass, and never saw it. And you, you had our line opening holes, and Perkle hitting the holes with a full head of steam, and bang. Well, another missed extra point. If the Spartans have had any negatives today, it's they've missed a couple of extra points. But hey, it's 26 to seven in favor of the Spartans. Yep. But that's something again that's going to have to be cleaned up as you head into the next especially in the next couple of weeks. Like you said, John, they need to win two of the next three, and after tonight, one out of the last two, and you'd hate to see it come down to a missed extra point that could be a determining factor in playoff. playoff well, again, folks. next week, you look at the Spartans, Palmyra Eagle. It is at Palmyra Eagle, and again, road trip. It's an adventure, and I can tell you this, the Spartans should be favored for that game, but we've got... We've got 111 to go here in the first half and another half right. to go here. So this one is you know far, what, far from over. East Troy was favored last Friday evening here coming into Lloyd Schneider Stadium. And they acted like it from the time they got off the bus at 615. That's because their bus broke down. Yeah, right. Weedle. <laughs> it's a teed up. Squib kick. Might have been touched. Picked up there by Wendell. Couple of missed tackles. Wendell Welter, he'll get the ball out over the 40-yard line. You are just loving saying that name, aren't you, huh, John? Wendell yes. Welter. Yeah, that's, my, that's my racing. Uh... <laughs> the voice of MIS. We had quite a name show up last week. It was, uh, see if I can remember how to spell it. C-I-E-S-I-E-L-S-K-I. Shashelsky. -E from Plover, Wisconsin. Well, that's a nice. Shishelsky. That's a nice what, German name? Or kid, Italian kid name? Had, kid had never been to the track. He'd, <laughs> really? Our track, of course, is on one of these simulated computer yep. game things. So he played that at home. Comes down to our track, wins. First time he's ever <laughs> there. But he spelled his name phonetically for us, which <laughs> I have told him I appreciate Yes, that. I, I think you probably would. Miles going to go forward for about four. Whitewater probably going to be content here just not to turn over the ball unless they come up with that play, Bill, yep. that, well, they just changed linemen. See a late substitution there, so. Yeah, McFarland wants to just be careful, just not give anything big up here. Here's a pass incomplete to Welter. Tell you what, Bill, when uh, Whitewater came out, recovered that fumble on the opening kick, marched the ball right down the field, you saw a lot of bounce in their step when they were coming in and off the field. It's gone now. Yeah. yeah. And again, halftime probably can't come soon enough for Whitewater. They've been stunned here for 26 straight points. And again, for the Spartans, you just don't want to give up a big play and give Whitewater momentum going into the second half. Absolutely. You are dead on as usual, John. Third down, Miles straight ahead over midfield. Again, you got to like, we've been talking about that throwback. Tell you, Miles is a throwback to those hardworking kids of the old days, you know, that 
played both ways and just yep. got beat up, you know, but they kept getting up and getting up and getting up, and he has been the workhorse here, but so has Nick Perkle for the Spartans. All right, three, four, five yards and a cloud of dust in the first half. Well, Zach here we go, Miles. Bill, the timeout now. Fourth down, Whitewater. 19 seconds to go. They call the timeout, but I don't know what's going on here. Confusion. Yeah. The clock is running. The managers are on the field for the Spartans. They're just going to let this clock They're run just out. They're going to let it run out, it looks like. Yep, nobody's going to stop like. that. Yep, no need for the Spartans to stop it. And... One half in the books here from Lloyd Schneider Stadium on Friday night, September 28th, Rock Valley Conference football. We are at halftime. The score, the McFarland Spartans 26, the Whitewater Whippets 7. We will be back with the second half in just a couple of minutes.
Spartan Band now performs Crazy Little Thing Called Love.
now it's time for the 2012 Senior Feature, in which the band will perform Stacy's Mom and Mambo number five. Performance. The Spartan Band performs what has become an accredited tradition. Our special version of the school song. Here's 
final victors. Good evening again, Spartan fans, and we are McFarland Spartan football is back on the air, and we're going to get ready here for the second half in a minute. Just to kind of recap the first half scoring in the first quarter, Whitewater Whippets open up the scoring at 7.03 on a four-yard run by Zach Miles. Cooper with the extra point, making it 7-0 Whitewater. From there on out, McFarland has scored 26 unanswered points, similar to last year when they scored 31 unanswered points to win 31 to 7. The scores were in the first quarter at 4:43 of the first quarter. Nick Perkle, a two-yard run. Chris Weedle, the extra point, and not at the score at 7 all. As we entered the second quarter at 11:38, there was a 72-yard pass from Clayton Neitzel to Chris Weedle. The extra point was missed. At 8.40 of the second quarter, there was a nine-yard run by Nick Perkle, Chris Weedle with the extra point, and at one minute and 11 seconds left in the first half, the Spartans put on almost an 80-yard drive, mostly running, which was capped off with a five-yard run by Nick Perkle with 1.11 remaining in the first half. Extra point was missed, thus leading us to the halftime score of McFarland 26, Whitewater 7. And I'm going to turn it back over here to uh, the voice of McFarland football and basketball, Mr. John Wells, and we'll kind of have him. He's going to point out some of the seniors in that that you maybe mentioned or saw in our little halftime presentation tonight, band and palms. You know, Go just ahead, John. The unique thing about football is, you know, when a kid's a senior and they play their last game, it usually means it's their last game because yes. you just don't throw on the pads. Same thing for marching band. Yep. You know, those kids uh, Absolutely. put a lot of time. Oh, and, a lot of time. And uh, when it's their last time to march out here at halftime, unless you go on to college and get involved, uh, you know, you're pretty much done. And, and we had quite a few seniors out here, as we always do. And we'll work their names in yep. during the half here. And, again, a nice little tribute, too, because some of those kids had the privilege of working with uh, Mr. William Garvey, who we paid tribute to last week at homecoming, who's – no longer with us, but did a heck of a lot for McFarland music. So here we go, John. Weedle tees it up. Going to be short. At the 20. That's Sailor. Cuts it back. Manaleg almost had him. And down he goes at the 23-yard line. That was number 40. 
Nick Copleen in there for the Spartans. Again, seniors in the band, Samantha Berry, Andrea Butcher, Megan Davidson, Emma Dillon, Hartman Hole, Alyssa Iwanski, Michael Yeagers, Jordan Croneman, Clara McGowan, Tyler McGraw, Joel Muting, Elena Ponke, Abby Polipnik, Conley Potter, Zoe Ridgeway, Rachel Royson, Alex Thomas, Austin Weber, Garrett Wolf, Thomas Zahn. So again, a great group of seniors playing their last game here, or managing, and also playing in the pep band, and I believe we also had a couple of seniors in the Palms. Palms. Yep. And the Palms, of course, they'll continue on into the winter sports season. All right. Some of the band people will be in the pep band at the basketball games, and that's supporting kids there. Well, first and 10 from the 23, and that's the workhorse, number 42, Zach Miles. He'll get him out of the shadow of their own goal post. Moves it straight ahead. Austin Redders again having to come up to make the stop at the 27-yard line. So 14 yards in the first carry for the Whippets. You know, John, Zach, Miles in the first half carried the ball 18 times for 97 yards. So with that carry, that pushed him uh, over the 100-yard mark. And he's been averaging only 71 a game. So, like you said, workhorse. And there he goes again. And again, he's getting five, six yards at a crack for the Whippets who we believe Whippet is a dog. Andrew Day thought it was a mythical creature that lived in the sewers, but I don't believe that's right. I think it's a dog. We should have done a little research at halftime. Where's Jim we, Hickey uh, when we uh, need him? He would have, Jim would have known. <laughs> the Jim scholar. would have known. He yep, would have known. The scholar. So second down and five for Whitewater. Ball at their 32-yard line. Then ball carrier gets back to the line of scrimmage. No more. Antoine Washington on the stop. I believe that was Taujus, number 41. Yeah, it's tough to follow. You got three ball carriers, potential ball carriers in your backfield. Third down and five again. Spartans could make a statement here on the first possession of the second half by getting a stop. Will the Whippets go to the air, trailing 26-7 here in the third quarter? And off, going to be short of the first down. Not by much, though. But that ball's going to be... That was Wendell Welter. They're going to mark it. It looks like the 36, so it's going to be a good yard short. Well, no gambling here tonight for Whitewater. They appear to be willing to kick the ball, see if they try to draw the Spartans offsides. Andy Cooper is back there at his 22-yard line. Said Cooper's got a good leg on him. He averages 43 yards a punt. His first punt this evening was about 40 yards. Nice little spiral. Wheel and Dow back at their 35. We'll kick it away. That's going to go to Dahl. He'll field it at the 30. Straight ahead, 35. Gets outside, 40, 45. In the Whitewater territory, but we've got a penalty marker down on this side of the field. Possibly a clip. clip way away hold. from the Way, way away from the play, too. A good 20 yards laterally. We'll block in the back. Block in the back. So instead of the Spartans starting in Whippet territory, they will be back in their own territory, probably going to be 15 yards from the infraction, which should put the ball back inside the McFarland 30. A Whippet. Let's see now. It is a uh, dog, country of origin, England. It's a 15 to 30 pound dog. The Whippet is a breed of dog in the Sighthound family. They are active and playful and are physically similar to a small greyhound. Would that be compliments of Wikipedia? As found by Mr. Eric active Redding. Active and playful. Our producer and main man. I like it. Here at your local cable, 982. Weedle now Digital. taking a snap. Maybe gets a yard. And that offensive line's done a great job for the Spartans. Charlie Moore, number 60. Number 56 is Ben Craigness. 67, Logan Rasmussen. Let's see. And we should know this by heart. You know, we've been doing it all year. So. Yeah. 
Out of the shotgun again, Chris Weedle, second down and nine. Straight ahead. Get some running room over the 40. 45, going to pick up the first down. Gain of 13 yards. So Chris Weedle, again, Coach Ackley using the athletic abilities of his kids in different positions. Yep. Yeah. Say his knee was down to 45, so first and 10. If we were to use the jargon of football, maybe we've got Chris Weedle running the Wildcat. Since kind of the Clayton Spartan. Neitzel is your... We'll call it the Spartan. Spartan Cat. How does An that active sound, and huh? playful dog. <laughs> there you go. The Whitewater active and playful dog. Oof, almost a high, high snap. snap. Gets it into Whitewater territory. He'll go down at the 48-yard line after a gain of seven. 8.15 to go here in the third quarter. Spartans on top, 26-7. Injured player, injury timeout. You know, how valuable is this, too, for Coach Ackley? I mean, this is kind of a nice luxury to have when you got three kids that can take snaps in games now. You've got Clay Neitzel that's been running basically the quarterback position most of the year, except for last week we saw a new wrinkle with uh, Chris Weedle coming in last week and making some really big plays, and I said two out of three passes, and he's... Throwing a couple and run for one here again tonight. As well as then, those are two seniors, but then to have Colton Richter, who basically ran the whole quarterback position in the first quarter of tonight's game. And Colton Richter is a six foot, 155 pound sophomore. And that's some really valuable experience. And depending upon, you know, what kind of happens here in the next couple of weeks, having that luxury of being able to give him a little active playing time in these games when it's when it's meaningful time too like I said tonight basically running him the whole first quarter of tonight's game and how valuable will that be to, to coach Ackley and his coaching staff in the next couple of years to come when you get Richter with this uh, additional experience he's getting this year. Well, and you know again the Spartans in a situation where they have to win two of their last three certainly can win all three of them then you're six and two going into the playoffs you, yep. you're for sure in Again, and Whitewater players still down, one of their linemen, probably no doubt one of the kids going both ways. Whitewater players coming over to get his helmet. Again, Jay Hansen out there. They're going to help him up. Looks like that is number, number 50, 50, and that is Josh Kyle. Another one of my favorite names. I like those names that have yeah. Six first and last names or both first names. Six feet. 220 pounds. Josh coming off on his own. I don't know if we'll see him again, but looks like a pretty hard-nosed kid, so we may yep. see him back in the game here. So again, the gain of eight makes it second down and two for the Spartans. And it looks like our trainer, Jay Hansen, is going to stay right there with him and tend to him. Can't ask for a better individual to be working with kids than Jay Hansen and making sure that everybody is physically sound to participate for the safety of every kid out there. So Weedle again will call the signals. That is a lateral pass to Arias. And he'll go straight ahead. He'll pick up first down yardage near the 43 of Whitewater. That'll move the sticks. Again, that's a live ball if it's not complete. Those can go six the other way very easily. Yes, they can. Spartans doing a nice job mixing up the play calls first here tonight. So first down and 10, ball at the Whitewater 44-yard line. 7.45 to go here in the third quarter. Spartans on top, 26-7. Weedle rolls out to the right. Slips, still going. Inside the 40, inside the 35, down to the 34, and very close to the first down. Thought he was going to go down, back around the line of scrimmage, but he keeps his balance. Gets the ball just inside the Whitewater 35, where it's going to be second and very short. Five carries for 39 yards so far tonight for Chris, and two complete passes. Eating up some time here, too. Yep. Two to the left, two to the right. Weedle, is he going to throw? Quarterback draw. Got the first down. Inside the 30, inside the 25. Inside the 20, still going, 10, 5, touchdown! Chris Weedle, 35 yards, just when it looks like he was going to be stopped two or three times. Yeah. Weedle, not to be denied, goes the distance. It is now 32-7. 
Spartans on top, and Weedle will try to tack on another point, or is he going to be a little tired here? Maybe they'll, we'll see. Nope, Weedle's going to still get a shot at the extra point. 6.57 to go here in the third quarter. 32-7 now our score. Pretty athletic run. You know, although it almost looked a little bit like, I don't know. Low snap, Boy. kick is good. 33-7 our score now. Spartans on top by 26. Again, that's, tw that's 33 unanswered points as the Spartans went down early. 7-zip. And they've rung the bell for five touchdowns here since. You know, John, I'm starting to notice a little difference, too, like you almost alluded to. And partway through the second quarter, Whitewater, after coming out all kind of pumped up and fired up after recovering that opening fumble on the on the opening kickoff and that kind of lost it seems some of their enthusiasm their drive and it's kind of like McFarland's kind of taking the life out of them there I, you know and Chris Weedle you know kudos to him I mean he just pounded that ball he was not to be denied on that last run but you know, I didn't see Whitewater really uh, attacking him or, or going after him in that and you have a little bit of a tendency here again. You know, this is a tough position as a coach when you get a team in this kind of situation. You're on the road and that, and you got to rally the kids back and still emphasize to these kids, hey, you know what? The clock is counting down on your high school football career. Let's make the most out of it. Sailor on the return, 20, goes down at the 25-yard line. Well, correction. Sailor with the return. Down at the 30 or just over the 30. So Whitewater will put the ball in play. From the 32, 6.53, time on the clock. Again, 33-7 in favor of the McFarland Spartans. Again, Friday night, September the 28th. In case you're watching this in the middle of the wintertime and you're remembering, gee, when was this game? <laughs> Hopefully you don't watch it tomorrow and say that. Here's Bullis, going to go to the air. Ball tipped, almost caught by Cooper. Got the tip on that. Was that Engelhart? Like I said, coming so into tonight's game, coming into tonight's game, Whitewater had only thrown 21 passes, completing 10 of them tonight. Bullis, five attempts, one completion for 15 yards. But like we said, he missed a real opportunity early on in that first quarter to put that an easy six on the board. would have swung the momentum probably a little different direction. Penalty it definitely down. would have, John. Spartans yep. say the Whippets jumped. Doesn't matter what we say, it's what the officials say. Yep. And it's going to be offsides on McFarlane, or my favorite word, encroachment. <laughs> when else do you hear <laughs> like that, that I don't know if you ever hear that word anywhere. You know what, I don't think you do anymore, Chen. Yes, we encroached on our neighbor's yard or something. I don't know. <laughs> We're having fun here. Yes, After we, we got are. that definition of a whippet here, I, we are we are living high here. Kind of so. made the night, didn't it, John? Huh? That was our special moment of the evening. Second down and five. Straight ahead. That's Miles. Fumbled it. Did he drop the ball? Let's see if McFarland has it. And Boy, no <laughs> indication yet. No. Nope. No. That was Colin Klein in there. Ball's going to be just over the 40-yard line. They need to get to the 41 for the first down, so third and short. Four down territory, no doubt, for Whitewater in this situation. Straight ahead. That's Sailor. Sailor sails out over the 45 to the 47, where he's helicoptered down. And that moves the stick, so first and 10 for Whitewater. It's the first time I think we've seen, no, we've seen him a couple other times in the backfield, mostly he's their kick returner. Sailor, first and 10. Wendell Welter met in the backfield and dropped. Number 56 on the stop, Ben Cragness. Did you know that he even had the ball there? I was looking for uh, 
bull us running around the end. I'm just guessing, Bill, throwing yep. names out. So you got about three <laughs> names you're safe with. And That's right. Again, it is tough, but we've seen Whitewater run the same formation the entire yep. game. Now when you're down by four touchdowns, you got to hope to break something big here, and that is Miles. He'll get to midfield. Down he goes there. Going to bring up third down and six. Miles the ball carrier. How many carries unofficially, Bill? How many carries for Miles? Unofficially, 23 carries for 129 yards. Wow. I think that if Zach Miles has a hot tub at his residence back in Whitewater, when he gets off the bus and goes home, I gotta believe he might be heading straight for that hot tub. This is gonna be this is quite a workout for some kid to be loading the ball at. Well, there the he goes again times. and he drags Spartans inside the forty. So Zach Miles we normally don't hand out this award this early in the game, but we're gonna call him Whitewater's player of the game. Well for sure. This is just uh Heroic effort by him, and, you know, again, not even paying any attention to the scoreboard. He is just running hard. I mean, he isn't going down easy at all. So first and 10. Straight ahead handoff inside the 35. Miles the ball so Miles again. So, again, it's been Sailor. It's been Miles. And it's been... Wendell Walter. And Walter. Yep. Pretty good sized lineman out there for Whitewater, number 72, 6'5, 270, and a junior. Pretty good side kid on the left side of the line. Straight ahead, Welter. Just inside the 30. Going to be a gain of six, just short of the first down. Clock on the move. 345 to go here in the third quarter. Spartans on top, 33-7. Boy, and again, John, what a beautiful, gorgeous night. I mean, we could just keep going on and on with positive adjectives about uh, this evening. What a, what a great evening for senior night here in McFarland. So third down. Bullis barks the signals. Miles again. Oh. Penalty marker. This could Laundry. be a face mask. This could push the ball down to near the 10 yard line or inside the 10. We'll see, unless it's a late hold. It is a you face are mask. All over that. Bill, you didn't gem. even catch that, you know, when I said Bullis was barking the signal. <laughs> Assume Whippets bark. He was though are, whippeting. Though they the are playful, happy dogs. <laughs> We have a Pomeranian Poodle at home. I wonder if there's any teams in the United States that have a nickname called Pomeranian, the Pomeranian Poodles. Poodles. I won't say no, but I would highly doubt it. <laughs> Found out there was another Cheesemakers. I always thought Monroe was the only one, but there's one out in the state of Oregon. Welter. No way for Welter. Did the ball come loose? Did it come loose? People were kind of running to that area real quick, weren't they, Jen? But I guess not. Paul Ackley was signaling the ball the other way, which any good coach would do, but it's going to be a loss of two nevertheless, so it's going to bring up second down and 12 as this quarter drags on a little bit. You know, I'm going to mention here, too, McFarland coaches are staying very active with these kids, keeping them focused, saying, hey, you know what, I mean, just again, forget this scoreboard. You have to do your assignments because... They've got a lot more football left to play, not only tonight, but in the upcoming weeks, an important game. So tend to business. As soon as you get unfocused also, that's the time when many injuries happen to kids. So and keep your fundamentals don't want anybody, going. Nope. Anybody getting hurt here. So, again, down near the two-minute mark. It's third down and nine for Whitewater. Ball is at the 16-yard line of the Spartans. Will they go to the air? Yes. Bullis got a receiver open. Intercepted by Brandon Dow. He'll bring it out near the 10-yard line. And a penalty marker. A little extracurricular activity, or should I say co-curricular. 
Couple of players on both sides mixing it up out there. Emotions starting to run high a little bit, more on the frustration side. Yep, I think so also. You could see Dahl had that receiver pretty well smothered on that play. and He wanted to go the distance. Uh, last week, I think it was a kid from Lakeside Lutheran went 100 or 101 yards on an interception. Oh. Yeah, because Brandon picked that off right on about the one or two yard line way over in that deep corner and he had every intention, didn't he? Of All right, well, Bill, hold it down here. We got, uh, we got, obviously, Dahl must have fumbled the ball at the end of the play because Whitewater gets possession back. So they must have recovered the fumble, then the personal Penalty. foul, which marks yep. it off 15 yards. So basically what we did is went from the 13-yard line back to the 26. They lose 13 yards, but, but they actually it goes get a back first to down. first down. Yep. Even the official's whistle doesn't sound good on that one. That didn't sound like one of those beadless whistles. No, I think the old the old B or the bead or the P. P, the peeless whistle, that's right. Maybe we'll have to get a dog whistle out there. And Whip it whistle. Dog, that's our theme of the night yep. is dogs. Whip it whistle. So second down and ten for Whitewater. It'd probably be a nice whistle with a nice soft tone to it, right? We wouldn't know. Whoops. We wouldn't be able to hear it. <laughs> Penalty marker. Getting sloppy now. False start against the Whippets. That'll move the ball back five yards. You know, that penalty on McFarland, too, puts them up at six penalties now for the evening. And I said they've been averaging about seven penalties a game, and that is still something that I would think you have to address. Second down, 45 seconds, clock moving. Should have just one more play here in the third quarter. Yep. How are we doing time-wise here, John? 8.45 here. Central time. Bullis. Well, first time ball's going to be dropped. First time we've seen an attempt at an option Sailor. play. Uh, I think that was Casey Engelhart. He wants to keep the ball. Now he's going to give it to the official. Casey Engelhart on the fumble recovers. So the first time Whitewater looks to go to an option type pitch. And the ball is fumbled, goes over to McFarland. 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's kind of interesting, Bill. You know, you get up like in the upper peninsula of Michigan where the kind of that timeline is, and you're in one time zone and another time zone, and you might leave to go to a game before the game actually, or after the game actually starts on the clock. Yep. And Well, look at this, Neitzel. Got a receiver wide open. That's Washington. 40 down the sideline, 35, cuts it up, 30. Still going, 25, all the way down inside the 15-yard line. That's going to go for a 59-yard. Well, see where they finally mark it at the 13. Well, 53. Nice pass play by Neitzel. I don't think anybody from Whitewater expected a pass. And obviously. Nor I. <laughs> I thought we'd probably just go back to just pounding the ball, but. I think this is kind of interesting tonight because first quarter was Colton Richter, sophomore quarterback. Second quarter, Clayton Neitzel. Third quarter, Chris Weedle for a lot of it. And now we're back to Clayton Neitzel. So Maybe three quarters in the book it. here from Lloyd Schneider Stadium. The score of the McFarland Spartans, 33. The Whitewater Whip at 7. Now, Bill, you got the ball on the 14-yard line. You look to score. You go for two. And that's still going to only put you up 34. So continuous clock, probably not going to be a factor here in this game. Which oh. is good if you want to get kids in the game. Absolutely. And, you know, and here again, we're at uh, senior night. Maybe there are a couple other uh, seniors that don't see the field as much. And this will give them a great opportunity to kind of close out their home career here on Lloyd Schneider Field uh, in front of the hometown fans and that. And, Get a full quarter of action in, whether it be on the offense or defensive end or both. I, I'm sure the coach actually loved to, to work them in as much as possible. And again, looking back at that third quarter, the only score of the third quarter was at 6.57 of the third quarter. 
35 yard run by Chris Weedle out of the backfield. And then Chris with the extra point, making it 33 to seven. So, similar to last year's game, again, where the Whippets went out to a quick seven to nothing lead. And last year it was 31 unanswered points. This year so far we've got McFarland at 33 unanswered points. Here comes Whitewater. They were lined up on the other end of the field. A little confusion there, so they are now charging down to their end. David Arias is going to line up at the tailback position behind Keeley. Clayton Knight's the quarterback. Weedle to the right, Dow to the left. First and ten Spartans from the Whitewater 14. Arias straight ahead, puts his head down. Inside the five-yard line near the first down marker. And again, Huge holes yeah. up the middle. David last year was the game's leading rusher. 189 yards and two touchdowns last year against Whitewater. And nobody knew who he was going into that game. That was kind of a career game for him, really. Yes, it was. Call it a nine-yard game for Arias. Second down and a yard. Ball at the four. Just underway here in quarter number four. Arias stood up just short of the goal line. Second He's effort driving. gets very close. Will pick up the first down, so it will be first and goal just shy. I mean, the nose of the football can't be. Appears to me, John, I want to say about three-eighths three eighths of an inch short. I see you peeking at the monitor to correct me on that. I was checking huh? to see if Andrew had the, uh, the tight checking shot. Checking to see if. That, yeah. Andrew Day now on the camera here. So. And I saw Eric Redding zooming in on that goal line to see how close. Well, I think a Whitewater player may have jumped. They did. I don't know what you can do here. I don't know if you can move Offside the ball. Offside on it, yeah. It and you even move the ball. Like we'll just like blow on it. It'll go forward maybe a, an inch. John, I didn't even see the official touch the ball. Oh, I, I think he just I mean, shook the ground up. a little bit. <laughs> Arias second back. He's not going to get in. Nope. Tried to do a leap, but got met in the backfield. So he's going to be short. And an injured player for Whitewater. Uh, you don't like to see that at all. You know, at any point in time in a high school I'm game. I'm guessing when Arias jumped and put the helmet down, it might have made direct contact with the young man who's down on the field. That a lineman for the Whippets. So 10.42 the time on the clock here in quarter number four. Again, Spartans up 33-7, scoring 33 unanswered points. Can you just hope with the young man that's out there on the field that it's nothing with a, with a head or a concussion injury because those are the things that, boy, are well, at all they, levels are really looking at this concussion stuff. And you know as well as I do with anyone who's coaching now, you've got to view videos and take tests and everything else he's to up. He's protect up. people. So that's good. That's a good sign to see. And you can tell me what number that is because I can't tell. It's something one. Or is it 51? Let's go with 51. Corey Dean, a 5-foot, 9-inch, 230-pound senior. So 50 and 51 now for Whitewater on the sidelines with yep. injuries. Josh Kyle and Corey Dean. Second down and goal. Arias going to try it again. Is he in? Yes, he is. So the senior, David Arias, scores on senior night. With 10.31 to go here in the fourth quarter, it's now 39-7 with the extra point pending. Nice little touch wanting to get David, I'm sure, after at last year's game as well as this year hasn't had as many carries, obviously, with Nick Perkle carrying the load. And as well as we haven't even mentioned, Don Shea Hudson still injured. Kick is on the way, and it is is good so score now the McFarland Spartans 40 the Whitewater Whip at 7 we expected a good game here tonight Bill I don't think we expected to see a score like this no nope. especially not after kind of the start that we had as well as kind of in looking at uh, 
you know, some of the comparative scores. Uh, very similar. They both played Evansville Albany, who's sitting undefeated at the top of the Rock Valley North Conference right now. Um, those Albany the, kids, they've made a difference. Yeah, they have. Uh, Whitewater got beat by Evansville Albany 26 to 6, and McFarland was shut out 22 to nothing by Evansville. So pretty comparative score there. The the other common opponent they had was East Troy, and Whitewater was dumped 34 to 6 by East Troy. And as we know, last week we all saw a great game out of our hometown Spartans here when they won homecoming game uh, 23 to 6 against. Weedle He's was roughed it. up on the extra point, so it'll be a 15-yard walk-off. See if he goes for the goal post on this one. <laughs> I can tell you his brother Tyler Let's would. just hope to goodness that they don't try an onside kick up 40-7. to seven. No, we don't want to even think of that. Well, this one will go to an up man who gets it at the 15. That is Gorsuch. Cuts back upfield, running the other direction. Loose uh -oh. ball. Spartans are going to pick it up. And we might be headed to a running clock, John. That was David Arias. Wow. Seeing a few different things here tonight. The kid scores a touchdown, then come back, comes back and recovers the fumble on the kick. And it's going to be first and goal for the Spartans inside the Whitewater 10. 10.19, time on the clock. And we are very, very close. To running clock to with running another clock. touchdown. Yep. So everything going the Spartans' way here after that opening kickoff that was fumbled and Whitewater took the That's ball down the field and scored. Arias. Inside the five, second effort, spins once, spins twice, still going. Finally dropped there by number 41, Tauges, down near the three. Time they lined up Hunter Halverson in the backfield at a fullback position. See if some of the sophomores that played in the yeah, I got JV name. game the other night. A couple of linemen, number 75, Nick Westfall, a six foot, 222 pound junior. Now in the game, number 66, Jake. See snap, six foot, 225 pound seniors in the game, number 66. See if I can pick out a couple other numbers in that line. Arias again, David Arias, very quick first step, going to be short of the goal line, which will bring up third down. Ball at the four yard line. Clayton Neitzel, the senior. Clayton's done a nice job this year at quarterback for the Spartans. Got to keep Clayton healthy, though, so I'm actually surprised he's still out there. Mm -hmm. Dahl is still in. Weedle is still in. I guess we want that continuous clock. Pitch out, Arias. Yeah, this one's not going to go. Well, he's not going to give up. He's going to. Oh, Boy, he ran about 20 yards, picks up two. That's Looked like he was going to be stopped about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Hey, we're going to bring Nick Perkle back in the game. We want to score. We're up 40 to 7. We bring our starting backfield back in. Yep. Fourth down ball is on the one yard line. They're going to go full house backfield. Uh, maybe Perkle's just in the block. Arius is the deep. Yeah, yep, that's what they were going to do. It's going to be a penalty, I think, against the Spartans. Yes, it is. We're going all out for that. And John. That seventh touchdown here. And we're right on average. That's the seventh touchdown. Penalty on the Spartans again tonight, averaging seven penalties a game. Let's hope that's the last of the penalties. Yes, let's hope so. Clock on the move, 8.15 to go here in quarter number four, 40 to seven the score. This will be an interesting call right here too, because I think he probably wanted, uh, we're gonna call it timeout. I think he kinda wants to Think about what maybe he wants to run here. I, th I think he was trying to get David Arias the, uh, his second touchdown tonight, but. They're going to run the clock now yep. as far as they can and take the timeout. Yep. 
So 7.54 to go. Whitewater kids hustling over to their coach. At this point, you just say, hey, get a stop. Let's get the ball back. Let's get some more points on the board. Right. Maybe get a couple of kids in who haven't played. And I think you're right, John. You know, from when we boy, to think back to an hour and a half ago after that opening kickoff fumble and just how easily Whitewater just boom, pounded the ball down the field and scored. I mean, they, they went on about a five-minute drive and scored with seven minutes left in the, the first quarter. We thought, goal. hey, this was going to be a ball game. That's right. And well, the pregame line on the, the game was seven, Spartans and seven. <laughs> so, Or correction, seven and a half. I think it was seven and a half. So right now, again, Spartans, I think we're expected to win this, but probably a much closer game than was expected. Yep. But again, they kind of got back and tended to their business and that, like you said, I call things like that a wake-up call, but... Boy, you definitely want to make sure with two games remaining after this that you don't go through another wake-up call. You just come right out of the shoot and ready to play. I think we're going to throw here. Fourth down and goal. Delay handoff. Arias, he's going to walk into the end zone for the touchdown. I think Whitewater was guessing throw too, but hey, yeah. David Arias, a couple of touchdowns here. Puts the game now 46-7 to with the extra point coming. Spartans are on a roll. Hopefully they can maintain this next week. When they go to the Wild East at Palmyra. And then finish up their going to Edgerton. Edgerton. Again, Rock Valley Conference, very balanced. It's a strong football conference. Very competitive programs. And this year it's very balanced. So again, this score, a little bit of a surprise. Weedle and the extra point. It is up. It is good. So 7.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. The score, McFarland, 47, Whitewater 7. We now go to the continuous clock. John, maybe you'd like to hand out a few thank yous tonight to uh, basically our, we have a four-man crew, but we need to mention the other two that are manning the cameras and the graphics tonight. Again, Eric Reddings. Cable manager and kind of headliner of uh, McFarland and as well as Monona Cable Productions and stuff like that. Eric's helping us with graphics tonight and doing a wonderful job of that. And on the camera, camera Andrew Day. Sporting yep. a beard here. Yep. Tonight, so. Just grew that. So one this day. is just That's wonderful. So I tell you what, and these two make our job even even easier and oh, for is, those of fun. you sitting this at home yep and we are getting this down to perfection so that when basketball season hits man wait till our live hoops hits the air looking forward to it live hoops on the air yep chad herps the sophomore number 31 he's got the ball teed up approaches kick on the way high sailing kick fielded at the five straight ahead out over the 25, down at the 28-yard line for Wendell Welter, number one. Now watch that clock move. Seven and a half clock time, seven and a half minutes probably real time, barring an injury. Some new names in there. Maxwell Jackson. Max Action Jackson. Yeah, 5'9", 195 pound senior. Luke Perkle, 6'1", 190 pound Junior, just try and pick out Cliff some. Cliff Manileg, he's new this year, I believe. Transfer in, I think, Janesville, maybe. Gorsuch now the quarterback and a new ball carrier. That's number nine, Brady Winger. Winger. Charlie Moore, six foot, two inch, 205 pound sophomore. Winger, wasn't that Bill Murray's name? In yes, I think so. Number 42, Jacob Williamson, a 5'11", 160-pound sophomore. Again, if we forget to call anybody, we apologize. Yep, Certainly but not just trying to list as many as I can here. Six and a half, time on the clock. Again, Gorsuch now the quarterback for Whitewater. He's going to keep it. Gets back, penalty marker thrown late. Right in the middle. Into Gonna the guess pile. a face mask, Jen. 
And, of course, while they're even discussing the penalty, the clock is continues to run. Because I was thinking on penalties it stopped, but obviously not. We're under six minutes to go. Like I said, short of a light pole falling or an injury, clock's probably not going to stop unless Whitewater scores. And we go under the 35-point mark again. So second down and three. Spartans jump. No flag. Gorsuch well, handed it off. Players going down all over the field. 15, 20 yards away from the ball, but ball carrier actually is going to lose yardage. We'll see where they finally mark it. Not going to lose much. We'll just say he got back to the line yep. of scrimmage. So third down and three for Whitewater. Again, 47-7 our score. It's We're going to try to make this last five minutes, Bill, as exciting as we can. So I would say, John, we're just going to hope there are no injuries in this last five minutes. Ooh, big hit. Ball carry going to be just shy of the first down. Got hit high that time. I think that was... Is that 33? 32, Scott Zahn. Scott Zahn. And you want to know... First down, Bill. As far as the season records that I pulled up, he, Mr. Scott Zahn, was not even mentioned. Yet. So these are maybe, that was might have been his first carry of the year. Well, you know, there's good things and about games good. like this. Is oh, you get yeah. Other kids yep. in the game. And that's what it's about. Gorsuch. Gorsuch. Forced out of the pocket. Look, Junior quarterback. And they aired up. Got a receiver open. Oh. Number 40 for the Spartans, Nick Copleen. Sees that ball go right through his hands. Yeah. That's what you would call a floater. Lost in the lights. A floater, a wounded duck, whatever. Clock to continues to roll. It's been a great fall for Spartan Athletics. Girls tennis won the conference. Yep, girls golf. Eight. They've got quite a string going in the uh, girls tennis in the Rock yep. Valley Conference. Girls golf still going on thanks to almost... A near non-show at the regionals due to a, a date change. Gorsuch forced out of the pocket, gets out of bounds. Spartan player there, number 30, Jake Maurer, drilled way behind the line of scrimmage yeah. by one of the linemen from Whitewater. They're getting their licks in. Jake, just a sophomore, got right up, hustles back to the huddle. You know, John, if we could quick mention to Zach Miles, I have to mention his... Uh, Yeoman effort tonight for the Whitewater Whippets. 27 carries tonight, 159 yards. That is that is quite a, quite an effort as well as uh, Wendell Walter carried the ball 15 times for 56 yards. So you can see they like to just pound it on the ground. And Mr. Bullis, their quarterback, was only one for five tonight in the air. So you can see any opponents that are going to be facing Whitewater in their next two games are just going to get a steady dose of Welter and Zach Miles. That was James Aylin, the ball carrier. So now a new punter, it looks like, maybe, for Whitewater. Of course, can't tell the number. I think that's probably going to be Cooper there. Cliff Manelag, number seven, five foot, eight inch, 164-pound senior back deep for McFarland. Kick's going to go out of as well Bounce. as Nick Cole Plain, but ball was not kicked to either one of them. That's too bad. I'd like to have seen them get a chance. 63-33, John, John Ennis, 5'745 pounds, senior, number 33. They're going to say the ball went out at the 44 of the Spartans. Well, that's one way to eat up some time, send the group out, bring them all back over to the sideline. Get some white water out there. They want to get some action out here. Come on, guys. Get out and call a play. Let's go. Yep. That kid from white water, they want to get some they want to get some reps out here. So yep. do McFarland kids. Number 80, Michael Beam in the game. 5 foot 11 inch, 145 pound sophomore, split end. 
and Andy Hot this end. Well, we spent about 30 seconds on the sideline, and now we're going to take a timeout. That does stop the clock. That allows the radio broadcast. 84, Andy Hot. 6'3", 180 pound sophomore. This coach actually trying to get with sophomores, really young, young kids in here to give a chance. Jacob Williamson. Well, a lot of seniors here on this team, and the younger kids are really going to have to step up and work hard over the summer. Yep. Get in that weight room if we're going to be uh, competitive next year, because again, it's a good conference, and you got to be ready to play each night. Again, this is a big game, great showing by the Spartans tonight. Again, the win I don't think is as surprising as is the difference in the score. All right. Colt Richter, the quarterback, is going to come out. 42 in the backfield is Jacob Williamson, and I believe that's Manaleg deep. No. Nope. Running low to the ground. Still going. Whistle it's as like a ball. scrum. <laughs> it was a scrum. A rugby scrum there. Who was the ball carrier there? Coming 33 off was John Ennis, the senior. Yep. No, they're not chanting Rudy. Not sure who they're chanting for. Nope. Hey, look at that. Ball carrier down inside the 35. That, that might have been Nick 40. Copeland. Nick Copeland. Copeland, yep. Marty Swadek, number 57. Now I believe that's what the crowd was chanting. Ooh, we're going to play a, uh, going to put a ball carrier or a, a back way back just in case we would fumble and Whitewater would score 40 points on this <laughs> possession. Take a knee. And it's over. Senior night is over. And again, the Spartans coming back with 47 unanswered points after a score. It's 7 3 the first corner by Zach Miles. It was all Spartans. So I'm going to turn it over to you, John, for a final cap on uh, tonight's game. And good luck to the Spartans during the remainder of the year and hopefully into the playoffs if they can... Continue their winning ways here in the next couple of weeks. And basically, after you put a wrap on this, we will be seeing you back live for McFarland Boys and Girls Basketball. Well, we'd love to get fall. back here for a home playoff. That game. would be that nice. That would be nice. But again, uh, Bill Cather and John Wells here. Just happy to be able to have this opportunity to do the games. Of course, we, we do it because we like it. And we know most of the kids, and it's you know something that hopefully they appreciate and their families appreciate and people in the community as well. So a good one tonight for the Spartans as they take home a victory here on senior night, 47 to 7. And again, we'd like to thank our top-notch crew, Eric Gretting and Andrew Day. So from McFarland High School, 47 to 7. It's Friday night, September 28th. So long, everybody.